Johnston and Dominic Herbertson. However, a couple of spaces missing on the front four rows. Jim Hind is there, so too Mike Norbury. No Joe Ackroyd. Joey Thompson and Jamie Cowd on row two with Rob Hodson missing. Row four, Tom Whedon and Brad Vickers take up their position. Stephen Haddo is absent. So watch the lights. And it looks like the perfect start for Johnston, but Harrison, I think, has got his nose ahead. It's those two down to Mir for the very first time. Good start from Jim Hind. He hit the hairpin, picking up a few leaves as they go. Jim Hind up into third place ahead of Dominic Herbertson. In fact, Dominic Herbertson has not had the best of starts by the looks of things. You can just hear the lone super twin of Jamie Cowards. 650 in there. Unmistakable sound of the twin. And that's the unmistakable sight of Dean Harrison leading a race, but for how long? Lee Johnson's had the better of him. As I say that, Jim Hine looking very menacing in third place and threatening to go into second place at the expense of Lee Johnson. But Lee Johnson's got that line covered, I would say, into Drew's hairpin. Oh, they're side by side, and Johnson yields and lets the youngster go through. So Jim Hind is the uh, lightweight Manx Grand Prix lap record holder. And he's threat. Oh, dear, spoke too soon, just a little bit too hot, and all that good work. I was going to say he's lost it, but he's regained second position. And the only beneficiary from that was Dean Harrison. Lee Johnson also up in the second place at the hairpin. So Johnston chasing Harrison again. Over the line they go. The front three breaking away from that battle for fourth place, a three-way fight for fourth. Jim Hind doing everything he can to stay with Lee Johnston and Dean Harrison. They're running up to the S's. Oh, my goodness me! That's a big one for Jim Hind, just slides out. And the guys behind just take avoiding action. I think we'll have a red flag. So this is the moment again. On the climb up to the S's, it just slides from him, and down goes Jim Hind. So a restart. Mike Norbury on bike 26. Dominic Herbertson pushing off the grid. So Dominic Herbertson won't be taking up his position for the start of this race. Once he's cleared, we'll be underway again. Unfortunately, a few gaps for this restart. And Norbury looking to blast from row number two, past Lee Johnston, Jamie Coward coming in as well. They're all looking to exploit the gaps that were there on the grid. There is a cracking start from Norbury. Johnston, I think, is back in fourth, perhaps. He's alongside Jamie Coward. It is Harrison. Out at front. Lee Johnston goes past Jamie Coward. Well, no surprise really. Coward on the super twin. Harrison from Norbury. Johnston made the move. I think he might be having a look at the inside of Norbury. Norbury just has to give away second place to Lee Johnston. The gap was there. Johnston exploited that. But here we go again. Lee Johnston. Trying to gain ground on Dean Harrison. Norbury's in there as well. Norbury, who's gone so well. He went, rode really well last year at Scarborough. And Dean Harrison get the better of Lee Johnston on a 600 this time at Oliver's Mount. Over the line they go with Harrison in the lead. Just two tenths of a second. And there's only half a second covering the top three. still hanging on to the tail of Lee Johnston looking to gain ground into the turn he needs to keep that speed up through the S's I don't think Lee Johnston will be panicking just yet had the better of Dean Harrison on a 600 so far this weekend that gap back to third place is increasing, and here comes Johnston around the outside. No, Harrison has the line. 
Johnson will just have to tuck in again and think about a move at mount side. Not close enough. Carson, yep, pretty much has it nailed. Jamie Coward still in fifth place, ahead of Tom Whedon. So Harrison from Johnston, over the line they go. That gap back to second, a third place might normally increasing. This is going to go all the way. Oh, my goodness. A rider down on the exit of Farm Benz. I think that was 7-3-1. He seems to be OK. As it's confirmed as Gaz Evans. The Gaz Evans are faller. Dean Harrison out of Drury's. Will we see a front wheel of Lee Johnston pop into the picture? Johnston just biding his time, perhaps. Still looking. Lots of battles further back. Stephen Proctor on bike 38. Still nothing between these two. But something you feel has to change. Lee Johnston will not be content just sitting in second place behind Dean Harrison. He will be looking for a move somewhere. Oh, Jamie Coward has gone off. So Jamie Coward, a retirement, Tom Whedon moves up a position on the leaderboard with only a couple of laps to go. Johnston and Harrison, great pals off the course. Right now, great rivals on it. Johnston just can't find that little gap to exploit. Doing everything he can to beat Dean Harrison. He's done everything so far this weekend to beat Dean Harrison. Although Harrison is getting the better hand this time. The Dean Harrison out of farm bends. There is the last lap flag, 2.4 miles left to go. Tenth of a second between them. Harrison defending into Mir. Defending by being quicker. Lots of battles further back still. Lee Johnston out of Memorial. Into Drury's. Got here and Mountside, but he's not close enough. He needs to gain some ground here at this hairpin. So he can perhaps make a move at the next hairpin. He needs to be closer. Harrison is really, really doing everything he can. Here's the man in third place, Mike Norbury. Almost 10 seconds behind the lead pair. Oh, Johnston's not close enough. Unless Harrison makes a mistake, he really broke hard into the hairpin. And Tom Whedon is a retirement to Drury's. Overcooked it into the hairpin. Oh, what a landing from Harrison. Well, he deserves this race victory. He'll be glad that he's beaten this man at least once this weekend at Oliver's Mount. Just needs to keep it on two wheels out of the turn and pass the checkered flag. Dean Harrison and Lee Johnson will have enjoyed that one. Yes. Another cracking 600 jewel at Oliver's Mount. And here comes Mike Norbury, a wheelie to celebrate third place. Oh, Joey Thompson in fourth ahead of Brad Vickers and Don Gilbert. The podium made up of Mike Norbury, Lee Johnston and race winner Dean Harrison. Another top class race from the 600s. After the break, though, we turn our attention back from two wheels to three with the sidecars. Gold Cup here at Oliver's Mount. Sidecar action for you on the way with race two to come. Here's what happened with a recap of race one. Well, the race had been delayed due to high winds, but once they were going, it would be another close encounter. Conrad Harrison and Andy Winkle starting off in a strong position. However, it was Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy who would prove unbeatable Lee Crawford going on to take what would be his 12th victory at Oliver's Mount and an eighth win uh, for passenger Scott Hardy. 
Wind still around, but not as strong as it was earlier on today. Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy have dominated the sidecars at Oliver's Mount this weekend. They're in pole position. Alongside them on the front row again, Conrad Harrison and Andy Winkle. Then behind them, it's Steve and Matty Ramsden, Michael Russell and Carl Schofield, with Bruce and Ashley Moore on row three, alongside Richard Hackney and Dave Ryder, Sean Chandler and Ben Chandler, Chris Schofield, William Morley, Paul Riley and Jody James bringing up the back of the grid. Can anybody stop Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy from making it a clean sweep of victories this weekend at Scarborough? Well, if anyone can, Corin Harrison possibly can. However, he's already in second place as they hit Mir for the first time. Bruce and Ashley Moore with a cracking start from row three. So then, Crawford from Harrison, from Moore. Hit the back straight, down to Memorial. And it's as you were, Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy pulling away from Conrad Harrison and Andy Winkle. It could be more about the positions behind as to who will win this race that will be decided between now and the chequered flag. Well, they're pretty much poetry in motion, Crawford and Hardy. Harrison and Winkle will be sick of the sight of their backsides ahead of them disappearing into the distance. Into farm beds. Plenty of battles further back down the field. 99, Stephen Matty Ramsden. The end of the road for 55, Michael Russell. Well, the gaps at the front continue to build. Almost three seconds at the end of lap one between Lee Crawford and Conrad Harrison. And there's that smoke again that we witnessed earlier. Nothing to worry Crawford and Hardy about. That's a fast approach into Mount Sai, but plenty of speed around the turn. A cracking drive from the uh, Charlotte boys, Sean and Ben. Outfit 33 already ahead of Stephen Matty Ramston. Crawford and Hardy on the climb. The gap at the end of lap two. Well, the lapping around. Two, three seconds faster than Harrison and Winkle. And the Moors are still in third place, but they are a good six seconds down on second place. It was only Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy can beat them. <laughs> Or beat themselves, I should say. But so far, it's pretty faultless. Lap times are on the button every time. Corin Harrison and Andy Winkle look as if they're going to have to settle for yet another second place. No smoke this time. Crawford and Hardy. Well, I'd say that gap was pretty similar to what was last time around. Here is outfit 39, Bruce and Ashley Moore. Still holding third place. Over the line they go. Crawford and Hardy. A little bit more blue smoke. The gap's still around six seconds. So actually, they've gained half a second on that lap. Conrad Harrison and Andy Winkle, although they'd have to find something a bit special to close down the race leaders between now and the end of this race. Still in third place, Bruce and Ashley Moore. Still in fourth place, it's the Chandlers, Sean and Ben. Through go the Moors at Mir, at Mir hairpin. Harrison and Andy Winkle continue in their pursuit of the race leaders. The 
Down into Farm Benz again for Crawford and Hardy. Oh, I'd say that gap is even bigger now this time as they begin the last lap. So Crawford and Hardy go through. It was eight seconds on the previous lap. Oh, they've taken a second off. However, they go into this final lap seven seconds down on the race leaders. And here come the outfit in third place. Bruce and Ashley Moore with what should be a podium finish. They've got around 10 seconds in hand on the Chandlers in fourth place. Lee Crawford on his way to what will be a 13th victory at Oliver's Mount. It will be a ninth win as a passenger for Scott Hardy. They just have farm bends to negotiate. He was part of the Oliver's Mount circuit, of course, introduced uh, 20 or so years ago. But here, across the line, goes Crawford and Hardy to take the win. Bruce and Ashley Moore with a well-deserved third place. Conrad Harrison and Andy Winkle in second. And it's Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy, the men to beat yet again. We can't race, complain, uh, you know, positive. A few issues on the bike we need to fix. Lee Crawford and Scott Hardy. Over the moon, really. Happy days, yeah. Good, really good. And Scott, good to be back. Yeah, always good to be back. Always good to be back. Well, all kinds of machines have made their mark here at the Gold Cup over the years. And you don't have to walk too far through the paddock before you bump into the odd legendary rider as well. John, after all the disruption over the last few months, how nice is it to go road racing again? It's amazing, yeah, it's really good. I'm really enjoying my time here at Scarborough. And, and, you know, I've been looking at it all year, the Kawasaki. Uh, I've sat at it a few times, but we've never had the engine going. So, yeah, just a like a three-lap parade there, and I was like, I'm going to make use of my parade, so I got, got the head down a little bit. But it was, yeah, it was really nice to get, get the leg over it eventually, you know. It's, uh, and I'll tell you what, it got my attention. Going down that back straight, I've been, I've been riding the Ducati Cup, and it's them bikes are a bit steady compared to this. This is a proper 230 horsepower two bike. What do you make of the, the racing here at Oliver's Mount this weekend? Who do you see as the favourites in the different categories? You know, it's difficult to call, isn't it? You know, you've got Dean and you've got Lee. Lee's riding really well. He's riding really smart as well at VSB. Uh, he's a little tiny jockey as well, so this this sort of track will suit him to down to a T. You know, these short short straights and hairpins. But I don't know. Dean's a master around here. He's been been unbeaten for a long time around here. Won a lot of gold cups and uh, some young good riders out there as well. Jim Hyde, my mate Joe Ackroyd's up there. And uh, I don't know. I just want to see good, safe racing. And, the nice thing about it is a lot of, a lot of families here, you know, kids, and they're all having a good time, just desperate to, to go and see some racing. Great to see such a legendary rider with a smile back on his face. And after the break, some legendary bikes with the classic superbike race. Welcome back to sunny Scarborough. Next up, it's the Bennett's Classic Superbike Race. And once again, the man to beat there with the number one on his bike, it's Dean Harrison. What about the, uh, on the Classic Superbike then? You seem to be the, the man to beat in that one. Yeah, oh, the Classic Superbike, the bike's unreal to be honest. It's so nice to ride. It's just, uh, of all the classic bikes I'll ride, that's probably, probably the one of the best to be on. So no, it's, uh, it's almost, so I'm, I feel like I'm cheating. It's that good, the bike, that ZXR, it's unbelievable. So no, it's uh, just keep doing what we're doing in that and then do some wheelies. Time to go racing then here at Oliver's Mount, your commentator, Dave Moore. Dean Harrison on the ZXR 750 takes up pole position for the classic superbike race. Alongside him on the front row, David Bell on the big Yamaha 1000. 
Sam Johnson on the YZF 750 completes row one. Row two, it's Tom Whedon on the Suzuki 750. Adrian Harrison on the Kawasaki 750, as is to Dave Hewson on the also on a ZXR. Full grid, and away we go. Oh, a little bit of drifting from Bell. But he should have the whole shot down into Mia. Adrian Harrison providing the pictures, looking back at 77, Tom Whedon. So around the Mia hairpin they go. David Bell leading this one. Harrison back in third place by the looks of things. Indeed, he is, in fact, not for long. Along the back straight, up into second place goes Dean Harrison. So David Bell on the OW01 Yamaha from Dean Harrison, from Sam Johnson, the YZF 750. Oh, Dave Bell sliding the back in into mount side, but turns in time. For the first five bites go through a little bit of a gap back to Andy Saylor in sixth place. Harrison into Farm Benz, being pursued. By number 59, Dave Hewson. So Dave Bell crosses the line. Bell again sliding the back into Mir. Harrison in second place, a second between them. And a second back to Johnson in third. In fact, the gap's generally all around one second at the moment between the leading riders. However, it's quite close to fourth place between bike number 12, Adrian Harrison, and Dave Hewson. But Bell has the advantage, but for how long? As through goes Dean Harrison on lap three. Harrison into Memorial, ahead of Bell, turns it in time. What kind of response can we see from Bell? He's still close to Harrison. He needs good power out of the turn at Lockers. So, David Bell will have to think about where he will get Dean Harrison, if he can. He has to stay close enough to him, of course, but Harrison powering that Kawasaki down to Mountside. No change in the orders further back for Adrian Harrison and Dave Hewson. Meanwhile, Dean Harrison into Farm Benz for the final time. So he takes the ZXR 750 to victory at Oliver's Mount. Adrian Harrison fourth ahead of Dave Hewson and Andy Saylor. Sam Johnson on the podium alongside David Bell and race winner Dean Harrison. Final race for the Superbikes of yesteryear at this weekend's Gold Cup meeting. Dean Harrison will start in pole position once again with Dave Bell and Sam Johnson alongside him. Unfortunately, no Tom Whedon on row two. Adrian Harrison and Dave Hewson are there. Andy Saylor, Brad Vickers and Paul Marley on row three. Barry Ferber, David Sudders and Christian Didlow on row four. Off the graphic, Colin Croft, Nick Allison, John Cliff, Gary Graves and Brian Clark. Watch the lights, and then away we go. A little bit jumpy from Bell and from Harrison, but they're on their way to Mia for the first time, and I think it might be Harrison, Dean Harrison, that is, as number 31 comes around. Brad Vickers with a long route into Mia hairpin. But it is Dean Harrison who leads from Dave Bell this time. So you'd have to fancy Dean Harrison just to pull away from here now. He's already ahead of Dave Bell. He had to wait a couple of laps to, to get past the Yamaha rider in the earliest uh, Superbike Classic race. Adrian Harrison just ahead of Brad Vickers as they go along the back straight. Harrison from Bell. Johnson in third again. Fourth is Dave Hewson. Then Adrian Harrison. Then Brad Vickers. A drop from Drury's hairpin down to Mountside. Harrison already looking in control of this classic superbike race. Big gaps already between the front three. Could be a bit of a battle for third place, perhaps. 
Harrison across the line in first place, followed by Bell. Johnson, who just can't quite shake off Dave Hewson just yet. Hewson looking to gain some ground if he can at Mere Hairpin. Adrian Harrison in fifth place. Strong Harrison contingent this weekend. Not just in the solos, but Conrad Harrison in the sidecars as well. Well, Dean Harrison, it looks as if 2021 could be a special year for Dean Harrison at Oliver's Mount if he carries on in this vein of form. His race wins are in the 90s now, and you won't bet against him hitting triple figures with uh, victories next year should he attend the likes of the Barry Sheen Festival and the Gold Cup. There is the man of the moment in this race, Dean Harrison. Inch perfect yet again. Well, they're closer this time as they cross the line. Well, I think that Dean Harrison could be on to an even bigger victory margin this time around. Dave Bell, 10 seconds behind Harrison at the end of the previous Classic Super Rice race. It's going to be bigger, I think, this time around. If they carry on the way they are, certainly. There's no one to stay with Dean Harrison in this race. Dave Bell crosses the line in second place. The gap between them at the end of that lap, 14 and a half, uh, almost 15 seconds, sorry. <laughs> the Dean Harrison on his way. Here he is over Jeffrey's jumps, down to farm bends, and then the checkered flag awaits for Dean Harrison. Dave Bell will have to settle for second place once again. Sam Johnson looks to be a solid third. But here's Dean Harrison, another victory wheelie at Oliver's Mount. For Dave Houston in fourth, ahead of Adrian Harrison and Brad Vickers, Sam Johnson, David Bell and Dean Harrison completing the podium. Bikes just forming on the grid now for the two-strokes and four-strokes race. A real mixture out there, 125cc two-strokes, 250 two-strokes and 400 four-strokes as well. So this one really is wide open and anyone's guess as to what might happen. Riders on the grid and in the commentary box for us, it's Dave Moore. Thanks, Matt. Unfortunately, Jim Hind unable to take up his pole position on the front row. So therefore, it's just Joey Thompson and Chris Moore on the TZ250s on row one. Nick Anderson and Mark Perslow on the 400s on row two and Andrew Jackson, the leading 125 rider, sharing the second row with them. Here we go then, Joey Thompson has dominated this so far, but it's a cracking start from Chris Moore. Can he make it? The whole shot down into Turn 1, it doesn't look as if he will. It's Joey Thompson who should be in that position. Nick Anderson showing strongly from row two. Everyone's safely around, mere hairpin. And it's the climb up the hill. And we look back from Joey Thompson's TZ250. Looking back at Chris Moore. And that's exactly what he did in the earlier race in the two four strokes earlier today. Joey Thompson absolutely ran away with it earlier on. And he's threatening to do the same again. 20 seconds was the winning advantage. While he is running away out in front, there is a cracking battle further back. Now let's look again from Joey Thompson. The wheel in the air for Mark Perslow. Nick Anderson trying to exploit the gap that was left by the missing Jim Hind on the front row. Just slides up into third place behind Chris Moore. Thompson's advantage, almost two seconds over Chris Moore. Down the back straight into Palmer's, then it's Morial, followed by Lockers. 
Joey Thompson. Well, it's a repeat of the earlier two four-stroke race. Chris Moore, a distant second, and that gap pulling or opening. So into Drury's is the race leader, Joey Thompson. Listen to that two-stroke sing. Further back, Brad Hughes and Dean Mitchell, the 400, and Dean Mitchell, the only 350 in this race. around Mountside. Across the line then, Joey Thompson takes the victory. Dean Mitchell in fifth ahead of Andrew Jackson, Mark Perslow fourth, Nick Anderson third, Chris Moore second, and Joey Thompson the race winner. When we come back from the break, it's the Twins, and the hot favourite in this one is another Yorkshireman in Jamie Coward. Welcome back to glorious Oliver's Mount. One more race to bring you now in today's show. Here's what happened earlier on in the Super Twins race. Your commentator is Dave Moore. Well, the first Super Twins race of the day proved to be a cracker. Dean Harrison and Jamie Coward leading the way. They were neck and neck all the way around the circuit. But everything changed on lap four. Until that point, there'd been less than half a second between Harrison and Coward until Coward left the track at Memorial. That allowed Dean Harrison to make his way all the way to the chequered flag to take another race win at Oliver's Mount. Jamie Coward is back and takes up pole position for this, the final Super Twin race of the meeting. Dean Harrison, the earlier Twins race winner, alongside him, no Jim Hines. The lightweight Manx Grand Prix lap record holder is missing. Strong row two, Dominic Herbertson, who fell off in warm-up this morning, is there. So too, Ian Locker and Rob Hudson. Ian Locker with a nice space to exploit. If he can use the power of the pattern, he'll have to get his nose ahead of Rob Hudson. Away they go. And it's a cracking start from Jamie Coward. Indeed, Locker does go for that position. It's the long way around into Mere Hairpin. It's Coward who leads. Oh, and a bit of contact between Locker and Hodson, I believe. Or was it Dean Harrison? So we're looking back from Dominic Herbertson at number 44, Rob Hodson. It was Dean Harrison that Locker had a little coming together with. And it's Dean Harrison we're now on board. Ian Locker. One of only three riders to have won more races at Oliver's Mount than Dean Harrison. Dominic Herbson, who's on the podium earlier today in the Twins. But it's Jamie Coward out to make amends for his earlier mistake in the previous Super Twin race at Memorial. He was looking so sharp and hungry all the way through that one until he fell. This time he's looking to make no mistakes, however, how many times in the past have we seen Dean Harrison, third, fourth, fifth, etc., on the opening lap of the race as Dominic Herbertson takes a very wide line at Mountside. And he's lost a little bit of ground to the front three, I would imagine. As I was saying, how many times have we seen Harrison? A few places back on the opening laps. But as the race unfolds, he makes his way to the front. Now, this is on board with Dean Harrison. We're looking for Ian Locker. Presently on the right-hand side of the pitcher, out of vision right now, but he should come into view. That's his front wheel. Locker goes through. Well, maybe there wasn't any contact, but certainly they were very close. And they are as they cross the line to start this lap. Now from Locker, here comes Harrison. Not close enough for the move. Herbertson still in fourth, Hodson still in fifth place. Then further back, Michael Rees is in sixth now. Sixty-ninth. Garbara Gold Cup meeting. Conditions almost perfect, just a little bit of a strong breeze. 
the sun continues to beat down on Oliver's mount. So Harrison, I think, has just made a move on Ian Locker. At Lockers, indeed he has. So Ian Locker back to third. Harrison up in the second and now in pursuit of this man, putting on the style of Drury's, Jamie Coward by 36. It's the unfortunate accident involving Ivan Linton, which has seen him missing the last couple of years of racing. Jamie Coward, you could argue, has taken over the mantle of Super Twin King around the British Isles. Coward from Harrison. Now the gap at the end of lap one was just less than a second. I would suggest that that's a little bit bigger this time around on lap two. However, that was Locker in second place and Harrison third in that occasion. Across the line they go. Locker just struggling to stay with Dean Harrison. 1.2 seconds back, Harrison a second and a half down on race leader Jamie Coward. However, plenty of time for Harrison to hunt him down. 33, that's Gary Gray's. Dominic Herbertson continuing to pull away from Rob Hodson. It looks as if Harrison has gained some ground on Jamie Coward, though. This is far from over. Dean Harrison certainly has cowed in his sights and hunting him down. Ian Locker trying everything he can, trying to use every ounce of power that the pattern can give him to close that gap down to second place, but just not quite able to do so. And Harrison very much looking at the race leader, Jamie Coward. Oh, this is much faster from Coward this time. Or change of position, perhaps, as 191 Alan Brooks goes through. Six tenths of a second that time. Don't look over your shoulder, Jamie Coward. Dean Harrison is coming. Here is Brooks as he crosses the line. Dominic Herbison still in fourth place. And it's Michael Rees in pursuit of Rob Hodson for fifth. Here they come, and Harrison threatening to make the move at Mount Sinai. I think he's got him. Can he turn in time? He can. Now, what kind of response will we get from Jamie Coward? They're side by side. They're still chasing him down. Maybe along the back straight. It could be a side-by-side -side drag race down to Palmer's. 49, Michael Rees. And as best he can, it's so tight at the hairpin, but he manages to do so, and Harrison regains the lead. Can Jamie Coward do anything about Dean Harrison? Ian Locker still in third place. Only a second or so ahead of Dominic Herbertson. Here come the front two and there's traffic up ahead. So not only do they have to worry about each other, they have to make sure they can make their way safely past the slower traffic. Here is Ian Locker in third place still. Dominic Herbertson right behind him. There he is into Drury's. The Dominic Herbertson he took. A podium earlier today is looking for another Super Twin podium if he can grab it on this last lap. In Locker down to Jeffries jumps. And it would be some move from Herbertson to make his way through. Here they come then, Dean Harrison. And takes the chequered flag, it's another Super Twins victory, Jamie Coward just missing.